Welcome to Deep Thought, the importance of culture. Now, if you followed me on uh, any of my channels, um, you know I really talk about culture a lot. And it's, it's just very important. I'm going to talk about three aspects of culture this uh, week. Well, this is more like an introduction. Then I'm going to talk about a couple other things tomorrow and Thursday. But culture affects a lot. Uh, we live in a um, civilization, and what that civilization does, it puts institutions and ideas into place to cultivate human behavior. In fact, that was the original meaning of culture and original purpose. Um, a sage would come down, um, would come down, or a great man, and they would put a culture into place. That's what all the holy men have done throughout history. Um, and there's probably some holy women there, but, you know, we just know about the holy men. They put in a culture, or put in an idea. And that's what was supposed to happen, but, you know, things change. But if you think about culture, how it, it, it affects everything we do. We're, we're, not, uh, we're not the beast of the field. I mean, yes, technically we're animals, but... We live in an environment where we have rules, we have laws, we have social mores. And that affects how we eat, how we wear clothes, the type of homes we live in. Like I'll use the example of um, food, clothing, and shelter. Really, if you look at the economy of any nation, those are the major pushes of it because any economies uh, says how you want to live life and how you're going to interact with each other. Economies are more of a social thing. What's important to you? What activities you engage in? And, you know, two of the biggest ones, well, you need food. Indeed, I saw a report recently where it said the beer industry which, yeah, you can't really, it, 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 you ingest it. It's in that food category. Creates millions of jobs. Millions of jobs. <laughs> because there's so many uh, primary things, the creation of the beer, but, you know, you need farmers and everything. But is a culture there that we drink beer. That's a cultural thing. That's a culture. We have a beer drinking culture. You have... Yeah, I mean, you know, you can get it from a liquor store. You can go to a club. If you look at most nightclubs or most pe places people gather, you take beer out and you take uh, the reason that they are there. But it's not just beer, but it's food. Think about food. Now, in, you, in, the, in the culture in the U.S., we're meat eaters. I know there's a, a rising vegan movement, but man, it's not ubiquitous yet. You can find it, but you can find it. We're meat eaters and using one type of meat, beef. You can find them anywhere. You can find a burger any place. <laughs> you know, you can find a burger any place. Um, just where I live, I can find, you know, I can, I, I could eat for, I could go to a separate restaurant in a chain and probably find a burger, a separate burger restaurant just within a five mile radius of me, maybe for two or three weeks, honestly, like separate, separate restaurants that serve burgers. Now think about it, that's a cultural thing. That's a cultural thing. Now think about something. I always thought about what would happen in a particular neighborhood if uh, a critical mass of people, or even most of the neighborhood, decided that they wanted to be vegan, which is also a cultural thing because within an overall culture, the mainstream culture, you have uh, a myriad amount of subcultures. So what if in a 10-block radius area, 90% of the people there decided that because of their culture, it could be based, you know, not just veganism, but maybe on their spiritual beliefs. There are... Um, there are, certain, there are many spiritual groups who are not big on eating meat. Even within the African-American community, you have a lot of people who, uh, you know, might follow uh, certain sects, certain religious sects, and they don't eat it. Now, suppose you have a neighborhood where you had a bunch of vegans, a bunch of vegans to the point 
Now, one, any um, that would affect the economy and the culture of that area. All of a sudden, meat wouldn't be as important, would it? In fact, any grocery stores, any restaurants that sold it, they would even have to sell uh, certain vegan products or they would go out of business. Now, in that same neighborhood, you know, I mentioned beer earlier, where if you had a critical mass of people within that subculture uh, who don't drink alcohol or beer or anything like that, all of a sudden that would change the area. See, see how important like culture and economics are very intertwined. And even in the clothing industry, it has an effect. If you look at uh, if you look at in um, the American past, uh, United States past, when we had uh, chattel slavery, what was what was the stereotype they were pick uh, they were talking about? They were there for picking cotton. What was the cotton used for? Clothing. And it had a certain culture that had to be in place in the places that needed that cotton for clothing. So, I mean, so it's like culture, the type of culture informs the type of meat that you eat. Like culture, like religion, like you say, like uh, with uh, Islam, they don't want to, uh, they don't want to eat the pig. That's a, that's a big deal. There's, you know, no pork. Yeah, be, the cattle in trouble, though. The cattle is in trouble. But say say you develop a religious movement and it, it was able to get control of the mainstream culture, but... Like, say veganism. Say you uh, had just a move where it changes the culture. It would change it totally. And not even on a political basis, but you would change the economic thing when there's so much economics tied to meat in this country. And then even the clothing. Because when when you start looking at culture, like it was a cultural thing for, um, like in the black community, there was a cultural thing a subcultural thing to always have suits on. Like, they used to be suited and booted, and that affected the local economy. We used to have plenty of, uh, we used to have plenty of uh, tailors and everything because everybody had to look sharp. Not as much now, but that's that's a cultural thing. And then, and then even in, uh, I'm going to tell you what, apartment buildings and single family dwellings represent a cultural thing They're because we have the nuclear family in this culture. We have the nuclear family. What'd that say? One man, one woman, some kids. So they would move out. So they would need homes. In fact, that's partly why it was promoted, to be honest. But they would need homes, nice size homes, or at least decent size homes, that's, or what they call starter homes, those little small homes. That's a cultural thing because of the nuclear family. Now, say the culture was different. Say the culture said, hey, extended family in one place. All of a sudden, that would change everything. And instead of, like, some little small homes to start out, start a family with, or even apartments, you got big homes because, you know, people ain't leaving. <laughs> people are saying, hey, it's normal for us to have, like, several families living in one big dwelling. That would change the architecture and how homes would be built. In fact, you probably wouldn't need, you wouldn't need as many apartments. You're always going to have, like... You probably have some places for single people or something, but and in fact, you might not need that because if if the culture was more about extended families, someone single would just be at home with their family. They would just be in a big house. So instead of that, so you know, you might have a situation where the culture, like hypothetically, if it became like extended families being under one roof was promoted, where you had mansion-sized places, but it had several people living. Um, you know, maybe some level of privacy. Um, well, maybe even that. It might say, hey, we all have communal, commun you know, family meals all the time. That would change a lot. And, you know, of course, people find privacy for sex, but it affects everything. But that's a cultural thing. Like, everybody think a lot of stuff is just some natural, innate human thing, but no, it's not. Like the food thing. And let's go back to the food thing. Now, I was reading uh, something recently, and um, it was a writer talking about North and South Korea. And it made, she made an interesting point. She was saying in North Korea, North Koreans are generally smaller than South Koreans. And the reason why is they don't eat as well. Like they, but that's, a cult, that's, still, that's a cultural thing. That's the culture of the place. That's the culture that affected their, that situation. 
And and that's something that I've uh, always think about. See, it, it, in that cultural thing, it even says what type of meat to eat or what type of food. So it's going to affect because maybe some people are not getting the same nutrients or, uh, you know, building materials. They might not grow as big. Like, for example, now you have uh, many um, elders will comment that the kids today are bigger than we were at the same age. You know, it used to be very rare you find someone 300 pounds or even say 300 pounds outside a pro athlete. In fact, you had pro football tackles and guards, linemen who weren't 300 pounds. I remember in 82 when the Washington Redskins had um, – had a line they called the Hogs. And it was a big deal for, but their average weight wasn't 300 pounds. It might have been 285. Now that's tiny now, but what's changed? The food that or the culture that uh, promoted it. So it, it affects everything, it affects life itself. So um, something to think about. Something to think about. Part of the reason why I pay so much attention to culture, because it's not just there or subcultures. So, anyway, that's all I have for today. I'll talk to y'all later.